Double factoring. So what is double factoring? That means we're going to have a GCF and then a trinomial. So we're going to do our GCF first. So I'm looking over here for a greatest common factor. And then between 2, 12, and 80, I can take a 2 out. When I take that out, what's left? b squared minus 6b minus 40. Now I need to factor what's inside. So I have to have two numbers that multiply to 1 times negative 40 is negative 40 and add to negative 6. All right, so we know the next step is going to be b in the front. And again, we have a factor of 1, so I don't need to put it over 1 because dividing by 1 is kind of redundant. So what are two numbers that multiply to negative 40 and add to negative 6? Negative 10 times positive 4 equals negative 40, and negative 10 plus 4 equals 6. Quick check, b times b, b squared, negative 10 times 4 is negative 40. There you have it, double factored. All right, so let's try a little bit harder one. All right, so we have negative 4g squared plus 12g plus 112. So let's take a look here. Hot tip number two, hot tip. All right, whenever the square term is negative, factor out a negative one. Okay, so if we, if we have a negative at the beginning here, we have one, we wanna make sure we actually take a negative out. So I'm gonna make sure whatever I take out is negative. All right, so let's take a look. Um, I always try and get the, first, the whole thing. Does four go into 12? Yes. Does four go into 112? Well, that, I don't know off the top of my head. Let's put in the calculator. Beep, boop, 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 beep. Yep, it does. So it goes in 28 times. So let's take out a negative four. So negative four g squared divided by negative four is g squared. Now here's what you gotta be careful of. This negative is gonna change things. 12g divided by negative 4 is negative 3g. 112 divided by negative 4 is negative 28. All right, so that negative is important. It takes out these uh, negative signs inside. So now we need two numbers that multiply. Oh, again, our leading coefficient is 1 here. So two numbers that multiply to negative 28 and add to negative 3. Let's take a look. Putting g in the front. And again, we don't need to divide by our extra because it's a one. So what are two numbers that multiply to negative 28? Negative seven and positive four. Negative seven times four is negative 28. And negative seven plus four, so the quick check works. There we have it. Double factoring, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, oh no. All right, so double jeopardy. Also, something better double, right? Double Jeopardy, awesome. All right, there's a really good movie back in the 90s called Double Jeopardy. It has nothing to do with Jeopardy, but it's a good movie. All right, so let's take a look here. 30K to the fifth, 57K to the fourth, 18K to the third. Remember, I always go with my smallest number, 18. Uh, 18 doesn't go into 57 or 30. 9, 9 doesn't go into 30. 6, 6 does go into 30. Does 6 go into 57? No. Um, 3. 3 goes into 30, and it does go into 57. So I'm going to take a 3 out. And then remember, the smallest number of k's I can take out, k to the third. I can take k to the third out of all of them. So here we go. 30 divided by 3 is 10k. I had 5 of them. I took 3 out. Squared. 57, k to the fourth. 57 divided by three is 19. I had four k's, I took three of them out, so there's one k left. 18 divided by three, uh, 18 k to the third divided by three k to the third is six. I had three k's, I took them all out. All right, now we get some good factoring. First times last, I need two numbers that multiply to 60 and add to 19. Oh baby, let's, Australian method it up. Put another shrimp on the barbie. All right. Oops. So we're leading off with K, 10K in both. We know 10K is going to start both. And we know because of that, we have a factor of 10 we need to divide by. Now, it doesn't matter where we divide it at the end. Uh, obviously, 3 doesn't go into 10. But if this were a 3, I could take it out right away and it wouldn't, it'd be fine. All right, so what are two numbers that multiply to 16 and add to 19? 15 and 4. All right, any common factor here? Yes, so 
3k to the third. I'm going to multiply. What am I taking out here? Five. So 10 divided by 5, that's going to be um, 2k. 15 divided by 5 is going to be 3. Over here, what can I take out between 10 and 4? I can take a 2 out. So that's going to be 5k plus 2. All of that over 10. 5 times 2 is 10. So 10 divided by 10 cancels. And what is left? We have several factors here. 3k to the third times 2k plus 3 times 5k plus 2. Money. Should we do a quick, quick check? Let's do a quick check. 2 times 5, 10k squared. 3 times 2 is 6. Inside, 15k plus 4k is 19k. So that's a quick check, and it uh, looks like all is good there. Oh, double rainbows. Double rainbows are so nice. Mr. Brust loves rainbows. True story, I've gone to his house. He's got this huge collection of rainbow art on his walls and stuff. You should ask him all about it. All right, so we're going to solve this. So remember, when we solve it, we have to get everything equal to zero, and we want our square term, our quadratic term, to be positive. So I'm going to add 48 b to both sides. So now I have 6b squared plus 48b equals 0. All right. Uh, let's look for a common factor. Does 6 go to 48? It does. So I can take a 6 out. I have a b squared and a b, so I can take a b out. So that's going to give me b plus 48 divided by 6 is 8. No, I, I'm, look at that. Easy peasy. I don't have to do my Australian method. That was just the greatest common factor. So set them equal to zero. And solve. Divide by six here. B equals zero. Subtract eight here. And B equals negative eight. That zero product property again coming in handy. The double decker bus. Who hasn't been to London? You got to love the double-decker bus over there in London, right? Love riding up top, looking at all the sights wherever you go. All right. So let's take a look at this one. Ooh. I need to move this R over to here, so I'm going to add R to both sides. Now I have 45 R to the third plus 51 R squared minus 12 R equals zero. All right, so let's take a look. Ah, 12 is my smallest number. Does 12 go into 51? No. What's the next highest factor of 12? 6. Does 6 go into 51? No. 4? No. 3. 3 goes into 51 17 times, and it goes into 45. So I'm going to take a 3 out, and I have an R, so I can take a 3R out. So 45 divided by 3 is 15. R to the third, I took 1 out. I have R squared. 51 divided by 3 is 17. I had 2 R's. I took them out. 1 out. Boom. Negative 12 divided by 3 is negative 4. I had an R, and I took it out. So, it's Australian time. Going to put 15R in front. It's a big one. We don't usually have the, um, that big, do we? So, 15R, going to have to put an extra factor of 15 on the bottom. I need two numbers that multiply to negative 60 and add to 17. See, that looks like a lot of trouble, but one of them is negative and one of them is positive. 3 times 20 works, so negative 3 plus 20. Let's we'll see if we have any extra factors here. I can take out a 3. So I'm going to take out a 3 here. That's going to be 5R minus 1. And then over here I can take out a 5. So that's going to be 3R plus 4. All of that over 15. All of that's still equal to 0 because we're solving. Oh, look at this. 3 times 5 is 15, and that cancels out. So now we have one factor, two factors, three factors that we have to set equal to 0. Remember, the zero product property, all three of those factors could equal 0. So let's do the first one, hardest one. 3R equals 0 divided by 3. Ooh, R is 0. That wasn't that difficult. 5R minus 1 equals 0. Add 1 to both sides, we get 5r equals 1, divide by 5, and again, let's leave it as a fraction. 
One fifth. And certainly last, and certainly not least, 3R plus 4 equals 0. Subtract 4. 3R equals negative 4. Divide by 3. R equals negative 4 thirds. Brilliant. All right, so Double Dare. This is a show when I was growing up, and it's about these families that would compete against each other. And at the end, they had to go through this, like, gooey, disgusting obstacle course. So uh, pause the video and try this one, and then I'll show you a clip of what Double Dare was. All right, so let's take a look here. We have negative 24B squared. 76, 12. All right, let's start with 12. 12 goes into 24. That's really nice, but it doesn't go into 76. Um, 6 goes into 24. See, everything's going to go into 24. 6 does not go into 76. 4 does go in. So we have a negative at the front, so we have to take a negative out. So negative 4 comes out. So I'm dividing. Negative 24 divided by negative 4 is a positive 6 b squared. Negative 76 divided by negative 4 is a positive 19b. Negative 12 divided by negative 4 is a positive 3. So we need two numbers that multiply to 18 and add to 19. Here we go. Negative 4. We're going to put our leading coefficient in the front. And since we have an extra factor, we're going to divide by that factor of 6. So what are two numbers that multiply to 18 and, and add to 19? This one really bothers me because people can't think of this, and it's always the easiest one. 1 times 18. All right? So let's look. No common factors here. Great. The second one, we do have a common factor. We can take a 6 out. So that's going to be b plus 3. And oh, the good thing, because that b cancels, so now we have negative 4 times 6b plus 1 times b plus 3. Now, one thing I'm going to tell you is this. You need to know the difference between solving and factoring. Um, if you solve this and you put negative 1, 6 or negative 3, I would mark it wrong. All right? Because this is factored. It's asking you to factor this. If it had an equal sign up here or it said find the zeros, you could find the zeros and solve it, but it doesn't. All right. All right, so here's um, a clip of the game show Double Dare. It's real cheesy and whatnot, but uh, it's, it's kind of funny. I don't know. Just watch it and see what you like. All right. I'll see you next time. See you on the flip side. On your mark. Get set. Go! Can we find it? Oh, where are the lights? We've lost the lights. Holy mackerel. Bob, stop. Oh, there we go. We're going to the lights back. Keep going. Keep going. There's number two up to the Sunday slide. Can they pull it off? Because if they can, I don't know what they get. Oh, that was great, Dana. 